Oh hey there! Happy Dino 1.11 release day! On this special episode I will review the highlight, in my opinion, of the recent release of Dino 1.11. This release marks the introduction of Docker images. Although they were maintained by a contributor for the past two years, those images are now official. You can find them on Docker Hub. The Dino team is working hard on bringing the Web Crypto API to the runtime. Although the team has implemented crypto get random value since version 1.0, this release brings subtle crypto digest, which is a first step toward a more complete implementation of the API. 1.12 is rumored to be a huge push in that direction. The Dino lint sub command is now considered stable. Get lint in through the Dino compile sub command. Dino can produce contained binaries. These builds will now support dynamic import using data URI and Dino Emit to access the runtime compiler API. Notably, this release brings many improvements to the language server LSP with the inclusion of test code lens. Changes to various operations under the Dino namespace that now accept arguments of type URL and TypeScript version 4.3. With Dino 1.11, you can now use the standard transformers, text decoder stream and text encoder stream. These two enables you to transform a stream of byte to string and vice versa. For this example, I have a HTTP request that will get 5,000 users, which will force the server to send the body in chunks. They will then get piped into the text decoder stream transformer. This will decode the binary data to a string. For the sake of presentation, I also created a transformer that will extract all of the username and then display them to the terminal in chunks. So here's the request. And then I'll take the body and pipe it through the text decoder stream and then pipe that result into my username extractor. This function is very simple. Simply match for the username in the JSON string. And then the stream is passed to that output chunks function, which is a simple iterator that will log every chunks to the terminal. So I bring up my terminal and I will type dino run allow net to the user.me API. And then the name of my file and hit enter. And then you saw very quickly all the username being printed to the terminal in chunks. This is a perfect segue into another addition with this release. Fetch will now support signals from the abort controller. Building on top of my previous example, I added a function that will listen for user input and abort the HTTP request if the user hit the A key. This will effectively break the data stream. Similar to the previous example, we have our HTTP request here, but this time we're passing the a board controller as a signal. We also have the same pipe through transformers and the same output to the terminal. The difference is that we have now a handle user input function that takes a controller. And so if the user hit the A key, we'll call the controller a board function, which will break the data stream. So for this one, we'll do Dino run allow net. And then unstable because of the way I listen for user input and the name of our file. Hit enter. So for the first time, I let it run all the way, but now I'm going to run the command again. And this time I'll try to hit the A key as quick as I can. Now you see that the stream was aborted, only the first chunk was displayed. Finally, this release also includes a prototype for broadcast channel. You can use broadcast channel to communicate between multiple processes sharing an origin. For this final example, I have this function here to initialize a pool of three workers. Then I have a new broadcast channel opening the main channel. And then in a second, I'll send all of my workers a message to start and on the workers side I also open the main channel let the main thread know that I'm ready and when I receive the start action I'll execute a complex Fibonacci sequence and log every numbers to the terminal so I'll do dino run allow read to the worker.js file add the unstable flag because the broadcast channel is still in prototype. 
And finally, add the location file to let the broadcast channel know which worker it can communicate with. Add my file name and hit enter. And you can see all of my workers working together, displaying all of the numbers as fast as they can. A lot of exciting stuff. I hope you've learned something today and feel inspired to start building with Dino. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share, or leave a comment. The links to the release note and to the code I showcased during this video is available in the description. Okay, bye now.